Dang. Who the hell? Get your child. Oh, you can hear her downstairs? Yeah. Talking about the turtle. I don't oh. know. I, I thought I heard the word areola. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we start uh, the podcast, talking about areolas. Have y'all seen Cardi B's? Wait, we'll get to it. Uh, it's the Venus House podcast. I'm Venus Say What. This is the 150th episode. Woo, I'm Shayna B. Woo! 150. 150 is big. 150 is big. I'm Dexter Stuckey, a.k.a. Dexter One. Guys, I lost my keys to the Mina's House podcast. I have not been here in two weeks. I am back in the, I'm back in the house. <laughs> Has it been that long? I think it's been like two weeks. It feels like it's been longer. Yeah, really? You get your keys made. So you missed Jamisa? And you missed, who was before Jamisa? No, 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 it was mm. Paloma Four, and I was here for that one. Yes. So it's only been one week, really. So you went to St. Lucia and thought you were gone forever. It feels like it. And this week has been so long, too. I, Me? I, I felt the same thing. And today's only Tuesday. <laughs> oh, shoot. It is only Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I was literally just saying that on air. Like, I feel like this has been the longest two days of my life, like of the year. So, well, it's the 150th episode uh sad that Sherlock Homeboy can't be here for this hey, smile so right <laughs> but uh you're here in spirit so so how was St. Lucia Dex? So St. Lucia was really good the only thing about it is I was like maybe I shouldn't post as much because remember I was saying you have to take a COVID test to go there so we had to everyone who goes to St. Lucia specifically the the resort I was on they had to take a COVID test so they in their minds, like once you get there, you're okay not to wear a mask and stuff because everybody's been tested and like they have like a lot of rules and regulations on the resort where like you can't leave the resort to do like excursions unless they take you. So like they kind of create like a little bubble for you and then the staff wears masks because they actually do leave the resort to go home and stuff. So I was there and I wasn't wearing a mask and I just felt like it was so liberating and like amazing to just <laughs> sit around and have conversations with people and talk to people outside of you know your home with no mask but when i would post things people would be like oh you don't have a mask on like where's your mask which is really odd because these same people would be in philadelphia and stuff in atlanta with no mask on and i don't say anything but <laughs> i'm in like a little nba bubble with uh <laughs> with, with no mask on and they're like where's your mask uh, but are you really in a bubble? Because you got to no, take the test, what, two yeah. days? I took that test and went out to dinner with y'all the same night. So. See? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, wow. our, our, right. So that's what I'm saying. It's like a false sense yeah. of safety because you, what is going on, Shayna? It sounds like people oh are being God, butchered. Oh, you can hear that? Yes. You can hear that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> even even you're taking planes and stuff to get there. Like I get it, and I do appreciate it. Like them allowing us not to wear the mask and stuff like that. But I really, really think that's a false like positive. I, I got that's dangerous. Like that, so, yeah, that's real dangerous because you you know you don't took the test Never three know. days before you left. You could have got it on the plane. And now you at the resort explaining to everybody. See, this is why it's da dangerous. You could have got it from one of us at dinner. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah after the test was taken after the results were sent to the people and stuff like that it's just like you just this COVID test and stuff is so weird and it's scary too and that's one of the reasons why I know we have like a topic coming up concerning that but that's one of the things reason why I'm scared to go back into the office because say they like oh, everybody get tested by the time you get your results back you've You've lived life. <laughs> like, you could be bringing that back into the yeah, office. Right. You had your best life. You was, we was eating $600 meals. <laughs> you could have been getting Corona right there, bringing it to St. Lucia. I was going to say, unless you get rapid testing, which only is in certain situations. Like, I had the second COVID test I had was rapid, but I, I was in a hospital. So, you know, I had been taken to a hospital. So the hospital has rapid testing. Some is same day and some is 24 hours. Yeah, but even if you get rapid testing, say you got it the day before you went to St. Lucia, you could have got it on the plane. You know what I'm saying? Like for the, a resort to tell people, oh, you've been tested, take your mask off. Like, that's craziness. I, 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 Dex, I'm surprised you, out of all, you... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, the, Out of all people took your mask off. You know what's really crazy about it, though? It's one of those situations where imagine if you walked into the grocery store right now and you saw somebody not wearing a mask. Imagine how you would look at them. Yeah. Like, you're looking at them like, why don't you have a mask on? You look crazy. It's the opposite over there. So you, so if you have a mask on, people are looking at you like, what you got that mask on for? <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know where you been. You took your test when? Last week? Where you been since then? Yeah. Dex, I was going to say certain states because I went to Atlanta. I had an event there. I know. And Georgia, you know, is, it's not required. Some stores oh. it's required, but basically it's not required. And that's how, like, we felt like coming from Vegas and Philly, we had our masks on and people were kind of like, okay, that's weird. I'm like, did it stop? I'm confused. It's still going <laughs> on, right? But they looked at us like we were crazy. Yeah. And that's why all the southern states are seeing an increase in coronavirus cases. 27 states have seen an increase. In fact, we're seeing numbers like already it's just the start. It's the start of the second surge. And we're seeing at least where we are in the Northeast. We're seeing numbers uh, like the highest that we've seen in the first surge. And it's the start. So yeah, that's scary. That's really scary. Like we're, we're just at October. So we haven't got full in on cold and flu season and even sinus and allergies when you kind of get sinus infections. So it's because some people are going to disregard it. Like, oh, it's just my sinuses. Oh, it's just a regular cold. And they may be more contagious you know, then they think they are. So when the second wave comes around, um, th this was one of our in your feed topics because uh, I feel like people have kind of gotten lax on a lot of the stuff. And, you know, uh, now we're starting to actually live life. You see a lot more people traveling and just going to parties and things like that. When this second wave comes, like, are you guys worried about it? I mean, um, how are you handling it? Are you preparing for it? I've definitely been preparing. Like, if you look at my basement right now, every time I can get a can of spray, I have it. Every time I can get sanitizer wipes, I, I think to the point that I've almost gone overboard. Like, I went in my basement and was like, oh, my God, I didn't really. Like, because, you know, and again, it was so hard to get. So the panic is when I see it, I'm like, oh, let me just get two. It's the limited two. Let me get two. Let me get this. And so when I realized when I went downstairs, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, Shana. Like, I don't think you're going to use this. Much. Can I go to your house and sh <laughs> to shop? <laughs> and I did. I bought like some water that I'm kind of like hiding down there and like little things like that, that, you know, I just remember were very hard to get that I don't want to be stuck, like not being able to get toilet paper you know, and those kind of things. So I'm getting prepared that way. And then I am supposed to be traveling, you know, for Christmas. Um, my niece is in um, Texas uh, in the Air Force. And, you know, we, but we've already talked about it and been realistic with her. Like, it's going to be based on, especially because of Texas, it'll be based on really where we are at, whether that's a trip we can make. I only felt comfortable making it because, you know, all the airlines took away change fees and everything now. Yeah. Um. I, don't, I, 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 I guess, no, I'm not really preparing for it in a sense of going out and like buying anything. I just, I kind of like that atmosphere of like Black Friday <laughs> for toilet tissue. I liked it. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. Like being out there with all these people kind of like in a panic to grab some toilet tissue or whatnot. I don't mind it. I like, I, I genuinely enjoy that kind of stuff. When the grocery store had all these like, like you didn't have many options. Like I had like lamb. I cook lamb. Cause I was like, damn, they don't have no ground beef. I'm gonna get the lamb. I'm gonna just get it. So like, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm somewhat looking forward to it. Plus, my job is we're working from home anyway, like, and I found ways to like the podcast and stuff like that that I do from home. So like, I'm fine. You know, I I'm not. I don't have a problem with the shutdown. I just feel like I'm a little bit more prepared for it this time than I was last time. Like, I think really working for home from home from months. I bought so much stuff for the house to make it more livable. Like you got to think before we were coming in, at least me, I was coming in and out of my house. You know, it wasn't like I was really living in the house a lot, you know? Um, and now, cause I am living more. I've bought so much more things to stay here. I bought a Roomba. So, <laughs> so I don't have to clean every day, you know, like let the Roomba clean. Um, there's little things that I just to like be more comfortable at home. You know, so um, I, but I've, I've been preparing for the past couple of months since they said, 
oh, well, when flu season comes by, we're going to see it again. And by preparing, I don't mean I'm stocking up on toilet paper, Shane. <laughs> but, be I just... be here <laughs> <laughs> but, but I've just been trying to make the house a little bit more livable so I can stay here and I have everything that I need here, you know. Um, and in general, I just always buy more, more water. I always have extra toilet paper and stuff like that. So I, did you, so do you guys have alcohol and stuff like that? I don't drink alcohol. I'm talking about <laughs> like, if you got burnt and you need some alcohol, a sanitizer. Why would like rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol. Cause that was something that was hard to get. Right. No. Because people, you can make hand sanitizer using rubbing alcohol. I'm not so making like... hand sanitizer. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> but also, if you like fall and bruise yourself, you might need to clean it with the alcohol. If I haven't fallen and bruised myself since March, which have been like six, seven months, I'm not gonna fall. All I listen. I remember peroxide was impossible yeah. to find. Alcohol, toilet paper. What else? The disinfectant. Paper towel. Paper towels. What else? Alcohol, too, was hard to get. Right. Well, I've stocked up on that, both alcohols. <laughs> well, I haven't stocked up uh, well, the one, the rubbing alcohol I have, the other one I have not. So I have I'm both. Not, well, because I'm more like of a wine person anyway, so that was something that you were still able to get. It was still coming in. The market still had it, so it wasn't as bad. Like, I'm not really, like, hard liquor all the time, so I was okay with that. They have um, this, but, they have Saint Germain and, and Prosecco in the in the stores. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. But I'll be buying Saint Germain because it's expensive, which is why I got it <laughs> Shayna only order that when other people are paying for the bill. <laughs> I was like, let me get two. Let me get two. But just bring two right on over. <laughs> no, but I do agree. And the one thing that I you said, Nina, was when we have the shutdown. I actually, this time, even though I think it'll be bad, I think it almost could be worse. I don't think we're going to shut all the way back down. We'll go to like a maybe a yellowish again, where there might be, especially in places like our areas, like Philly, that it gets cold and you can't eat outside. Our restaurants might get a big hit again. Uh, but I don't think we're going to go all the way back down. I, I just, if something tells me, no matter what happens politically, that we're just not, unless it's completely drastic. I just, I don't know. I, and I'm not saying that that's right. I just had this feeling that we're not going to shut all the way back down. Yeah. Well, either way, I'm ready. I got my Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> and I got the alcohol. <laughs> and if I need toilet paper or lights off, I'm going to Shana's house. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and Dex, I ain't coming to your house because you ain't got shit. And no, got I, lamb. Or, or you, and if you fall over here, you out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you got band-aids, anything? Well, I mean, I, I, probably not. My, I have a computer that's charged up and Wi-Fi. <laughs> Boy, bye. I even got my, my, uh, my laptop fixed and just in case for the pandemic. I don't know why. I'm like, let me get everything done in case we shut down again. I got my heater serviced. I got my vents clean. Wow. <laughs> I went to all my doctors. I'm good. I got new contacts. D see, yeah, you ain't ready, Dexter. Oh, the heater service thing is actually really that's because it's we're about to be in that season. And can you imagine if they said like we're not sending anybody to out to clean heaters or whatever it is that they have to do, and you're sitting in your house and, and during the pandemic and it's December? Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, I can't imagine because my refrigerator broke in July, mm -hmm. and they said, <laughs> listen. The, we're going 12 weeks out right now 12 weeks for repair like said, the, bye. everything was everything was melting i had to buy a new refrigerator because there was obviously no way i could wait for 12 weeks yeah. so i can't imagine like that's what people do need to understand that mina's right like things like that that you can take care of please do because although there'll be service people they're not going to be readily available because they can't they can't come out to houses like that i'm ready y'all See, look, I just helped y'all survive the pandemic. Definitely did. I am that person in the movie that I'm surviving. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dex, you gonna die fast. I'm, the, I'm like the first to die. <laughs> With his lamb. He gonna have his lamb and think he okay. <laughs> you dying fast, Dex. Not over here. <laughs> yeah, I almost bought a gun, but I was like, let me not do <laughs> Listen. Oh, I mean, well... well. 
Well, the election oh, is coming up. I was just about to say. You might want to get still think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then some of us might not have a heat. You might come in, there, come in your house to come and do your heat. No, but you won't. <laughs> I got a knife. <laughs> and I know how to use it. <laughs> uh, speaking of a gun, can we talk about Tory Lanez? So Tory is on a I didn't do it um, parade. Um, <laughs> he's having a I didn't do it um, tour. Uh, he was on IG Live talking about people are lying on his name and he's still Megan's friend, but she's lying on him. He didn't shoot her, blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to bring up something that I found while talking to you guys, actually. So apparently there's audio that has leaked of uh, Tory Lanez's bodyguard explaining the shooting. So it says, this is his bodyguard speaking. Tory and Meg get to arguing. Kylie's outside at the pool still. Tori and the girl in the car start arguing. So that's, I think her name is Kristen. Is yes. Megan's friend? Yeah. Cor, uh, uh, Tori and uh, Kristen start arguing um, in the car. And Megan walks out because she finds out such, such and such. Tori's been messing with both women in the car. We're going to talk about what a shitty friend she is. Right. <laughs> but... He continues, you already know how that goes. Tori's in trouble. Meg hops out the car. Tori and the girl start fighting over the gun. The gun accidentally goes off in the midst of them fighting for it. And the gun <laughs> shoots. And the bullet, the gun shoots, right? Not, not Tori, who's, it's Tori's gun. And if they're fighting, we'll get to that. Okay. The gun, the gun <laughs> shoots, the gun shoots, and accident, <laughs> accidentally, the bullet hits near Megan. So now the gun shot and the bullet accidentally hit near Megan. Multiple times. Got it. No, he didn't say multiple times. I know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the bullet, it's singular. That's why it didn't hit any tendons. It grazed her. It didn't actually hit her. She's lying like it hit her. End quote. Who wants to lead on this? Because I get it. You have several points. Kylie's probably like, how I get back in this? <laughs> <laughs> Number one. I was out of it. Now I'm back in it. Number two, are we really trusting Tori's bodyguard who's a person paid by him? Number three, where does audio come from? Was it taken that night up or did he sit there with a voice note and record this for <laughs> quote unquote somebody? Now let's get to the big one. We skipped from they were in an argument to they were fighting over the gun. So we skipped the major part of how the gun even came Aim. in play. Right. Like how did it, how did they get from, they were verbally, Megan's mad to Tori and a girl fighting over the gun. Like he, so this is my point of, I can't take anything he's saying because you skipped a major part of how the gun even came out. Somebody had to reach, get the gun, whether it's in the glove compartment, under the sink. Like, see, you not saying any of that. All of a sudden it's, they're fighting over the gun, and now it's the bullet's fault. It's not right. Tori's fault. Right. <laughs> right. Like, the, the gun shot and grazed Megan. <laughs> like, we didn't see bullet holes. <laughs> like, she didn't show us pictures of stitches of bullets. <laughs> and then lastly, Tori, she don't want to be your friend. You say she, your friend, she don't want to be your friend. None of us want to be your friend, actually, Tori. None of us. What a bodyguard does. <laughs> only because he pays them <laughs> yeah i think it's a little convenient too that the bodyguard comes out and gives his account we hear about that today and then tonight tory goes live and then he wants to tell like more sides of the story to me that just seems a, a bit convenient also like you said about the gun like where did it come from like did you pull the gun on her did she grab it from your waist did she pull it out of her purse like what where did this gun come from like i think that's a, a an, an important question to bring up and also like I I was annoyed with Megan initially because I'm like, Megan, you need to speak up. Like, you need to say, like, what happened and so forth and so on. Now, I, I, <laughs> I think Megan is one of those situations, like, maybe she doesn't remember everything that happened, 
but I think she remembers how much of a mess that it was, and she knows that he more than likely probably pulled that gun out on her or whatever, and the whole situation happened. I think she's like, I just don't want to deal with this, because I just know when this comes out and it gets out there, it's going to be ridiculous, and it is ridiculous. So here's the issues that I have with this whole statement. First of all, it's Tori's gun, okay? He got charged initially with a gun. It's not registered. Oh, right. It's his gun, okay? So how you gonna sit there and be like, they're arguing over the gun and then make it seem like the gun mysteriously came out, just right. fired. You, it's your gun. You got charged with having a gun that is not registered. You pulled out your gun in the midst of an argument with two women that you're dealing with. That makes you even, it makes him sound even crazier to me. First of all, you're a creep for dealing with these two girls, that's A. Second of all, her friend is not a friend for dealing with Tori, right? Now, we don't know the, specula the, the specifics of that. This is but, the bodyguard saying that. Right. We do know they're not friends right now, though. We do right. know that from yeah. one of our other friends. So if they are arguing because she found out that he's dealing with both of them, what, they weren't talking to each other? Megan wasn't like, uh, you weren't seeing all the pictures of Megan and Tori hanging out? Right. I mean, I, I don't know how that happens between friends and you don't know. But for whatever reason, say this is really the scenario in which Megan finds out that he's dealing with both of them. Why would you put out a gun as a man? Can I get, ask you guys a question really quickly? Is Tori attractive? That's what I'm confused. Who wants them? Well, who wants them? Other than maybe, you know, groupies and people like thirsty, like- He's short. Them? He's too He's short for me. Short. I think he has a good personality. I will say that. I think he has a fun personality. And I could see how Megan and Tori maybe had fun together. Mm -hmm. And then it leads to something more. I mean- yeah, they never. He, she never even claimed him. <laughs> like, <laughs> a day in his life, <laughs> right? So it's like they never even went public with this. He's super shorter than she is, you know. Um, not that that matters, but, but you know, I think this is a friendship that evolved into something else. And I don't think it was, oh, I'm so attracted to you. More so, I like being around you. You're fun. That happens, you know. But, and but, but say, then also, I think the last point is they charged Tori. So with the shooting, they didn't charge the bodyguard. They didn't charge the friend. So police have evidence to just charge Tori. So the onus comes back to Tori. You pulled out the gun. Why would they be a scuffle over a gun unless you pulled it out? So you pulled out a gun with the intention of what? Waving it at these women? <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> like what? So you pulled out the gun. Someone was like, chill, get the gun away. How you pull out a gun and it's not on safety? So you, you were there to shoot somebody, right? right? And it's not on safety. And now the gun fired and grazed Megan. I, you know, like, let me tell you something. If two people are arguing and you pull out a gun, I'm out right. in two seconds. Y'all arguing over a gun, we in a car, I'm out. So I would have been just like Megan. So for the bodyguard to say the gun went off and now somehow involved the friend and say, the you know, they were fighting over the gun. Mm -hmm. And then Tori has already said that the friend didn't shoot her. So we right. back to you shooting her. Right. It's like he doesn't want to take any accountability at all for this. And he wants to put the blame and the onus on everybody else but himself. Mm -hmm. And my other thing, like, I have two other issues with it. A, number one, like, let's just talk about these rappers that feel like they need to have. Uh, this is a big argument in this company, in this country, how we can buy guns so easily. So, first of all, I don't know why you're walking around. Well, you're not a citizen. So that's probably primarily you can't have a gun because you're not a citizen. But secondly, you had a bodyguard. So, and I don't understand how this happens with a lot of these rappers, singers, whatever. Like, so why are you hiring someone to protect you and them to carry at the risk of you carrying an unlawful weapon? Like, that don't even make sense. And then I think in Tory's statement, he says something about, like, it, again, like, just definitely like an abusive, narcissist man. Like, oh, if it was that serious, why'd you get back in the car? Yeah. It's like, it's nighttime. You guys have been drinking. You're young people. She gets, sh like, this is a circumstance that nobody can run a playbook for. It. Oh, this is what you do. There's probably so much going on in her mind at that moment. You guys are on this little small street in Malibu or whatever, Hollywood Hills. And 
you know, she is a young superstar. There's probably so much going through her mind in that moment. You might hear the cops coming and think it's just so many things going on. So to kind of blame her to say like, oh, well, why you get back in the car? If I, because what you basically are saying, your bodyguard is saying is whoever, somebody in the car shot her. But again, to make her even more like it's her fault is like a problem for me. Well, they grazed. So again, just nobody taking responsibility. Like we didn't, like, was you there, bro? Were you there at the hospital with her? How do you know she got grazed? I do right. think so to, to Tori's point though, and this is what I think I was saying initially, when like in Tori's saying like, if you feel so threatened by me, so for so on, why did you get back in the car? And I totally understand that that's like a really abusive tactic that people will use and that's what they would say. However, I don't necessarily blame her for getting back in the car. I do think like adrenaline's pumping and you don't really know how to handle this situation. However, at some point you were separated from Tori. Like he was in jail and you were with at the hospital getting the bullets out of your foot. Why at that point then you open up and say like what happened to you? Like why did you why did it take so long for you to come out and say like this is what happened? I think that Megan taking a long time allowed Tori to to do all this stuff. Him and his bodyguard to get their story together, to come out with his extra stuff. Like she should have pressed charges on him as soon. And by the way, she still has yet to press charges on him. Well, After all this stuff that's happened, there, there has been no legal action on her end that we know about. That on her end that we know about as far as her trying to get justice for herself. Well, there's a couple of things with that in regards to her getting in the car. Remember, initially she didn't know she got shot. Right. She said again, adrenaline. Right. Like point that. Right. So it's like just because I get in, in the back in the car for whatever reason we weren't there, we don't know what's going on. It doesn't mean that it makes what happened okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? So again, it, it's a very it's it's a reverse psychology. He's just a master manipulator, clearly. <laughs> uh, a man who takes zero accountability for his actions will not step up to the plate and admit his wrongs and will literally blame the person who was victimized by him. Because for you to say, well, you got back in the car as a legitimate reason for her getting shot, like, okay, no, that's, okay, I got in the back of the car. What am I going to do? I can't walk. <laughs> where right. am I supposed to go? Right, right. <laughs> where am I? Where, 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 in a bikini where, in right. the middle of the night in Hollywood. Hills. Where am I supposed to go? <laughs> Y'all fighting over a gun. I'm like, let me get out. I'm outside. It's dark. I don't know what's going on. My feet hurt now. Where am I supposed to go? I, I, a now, I think, though, the gun thing, I, <clears throat> in my opinion, I think he did pull the gun out on her. And I think she, like any other rational human being, tried to grab the gun because she didn't want to get shot questioning where the bodyguard was at this time and why he didn't step in. Hello. There. But <laughs> earn, your, earn your dollars, boy. But, and I do think her getting shot was an accident. I don't think it was like a, he aimed it down at her oh. foot shot. I don't think that happened. I think that they were tussling over, over the gun and it did go off maybe accidentally. But at the end of the day, Tori, you, you had the gun with you. Like you brought it out the house or could pull out the glove compartment. And at some point or another, you had it in your hand. So right. You have to take responsibility for this. But according to this leaked audio, right, the 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 tussling of the gun was between Megan's friend and Tori. Friend and him, right. So it Not wasn't Megan. Megan who touched the gun. So either way, if Tori said out of his mouth, it's on social media, her friend did not shoot her. You and her were the only two fighting over the gun. Okay. You shot her. Right. <laughs> And the, and gun, point, the gun doesn't come off safety on its own. Nope. The gun doesn't get, even you're tussling, nobody pulls the trigger on its own. Why was, why was the gun not on safety? If this yeah. is a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Like you have to take it off safety. Unless you cheddar Bob. <laughs> like what, like what are we doing? But also like, why did you have a gun and a bodyguard at a party at Kylie Jenner's house? Like, what did you think? That's what I'm saying. To? Like, why are you, I get that. Like people feel like they, you know, when they're out and they got jewelry and all these things, they want to be protected, but isn't that the bodyguard's job? But obviously he clearly does not do his job. Cause to your point, Dex, when this started escalating and the gun even came out and it was in Tori's hand by his own admission, by this bodyguard's admission, what were you doing at this exactly. point? Yeah, because and your job is to keep him out of situations like this. Like that is what it's only the four of you in this car. So what was keeping you from being part of that? And to your thing about him not purposely shooting her, 
I don't know. But what I do know is what abusers will do. And again, I wasn't there, but it could have been a manipulation tactic of her saying, I want to go, I'm done with you, whatever. And you pull it out almost as a threat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, so either way, you're wrong. Like, and your actions now show us you're wrong. And I just want to talk about you saying, like, she didn't come forward. I don't know. And I don't know. We talked about it on this podcast before in a few episodes ago. Like, why is she not talking? But again, I'm not like, what is Megan, 24, 25? Like, she's super young and, and in this life. And, you know, she did mention she doesn't have, like, parents and you know just these things so being scared in that situation and again we see we see women that are abused every day and go to a hospital and they'll say who did this to you and they say nothing with broken bruises ribs and all kind of things so I do just think that either maybe she was just completely scared and wanted to distance herself from this nightmare or she may have counsel of people maybe counseling her like in the wrong way to say like just stay out of it just stay out of it I, you know again we just really don't know but yeah. i don't want to beat her up for not doing it because again i do know that there are many and i'm not calling her an abused woman but she's a victim in this this case but there are many abused women that don't speak up you know and even when their life is on the line yeah but in general as a celebrity something like this happens to you your first instinct isn't let me explain to the world you know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of the times you have to process what's happening to you before you even bring it to the world. And I, this entitlement that people have to, well, well, you didn't tell us, or why didn't you say something? Like she was in the hospital <laughs> recovering from being shot, you know, and then you're trying to process, how do I handle this? I am an artist. This is, this is, could be like a Chris Brown. She's probably thinking in her head, this could be like a Chris Brown Rihanna thing mm -hmm. and to the magnitude of, an artist shot another artist, you know, like all, all of that goes through your head. Do I want to deal with that? The, the, you know, the public and all of that, I'm still trying to process the fact that I've been shot. And can I, and I'm not being facetious when I say this, I'm really not, I'm being serious. Like, can I like, and you talked about it, Zach, like, will I be able to do my signature moves and move and do, cause I'm shot in my feet, right? Like that's very major to like a lot of her performance and what she does. So like, you're just processing all of those things that, you know, am I going to heal properly? And what am I going to do? Those kind of things. I did see a video earlier today of Megan performing and okay. she hasn't lost a step. <laughs> at all you know what's crazy i so i saw that video and i just i remember thinking i'm so over watching her twerk you know <laughs> and, and i said this on air it's not like a hate thing i just there's nothing to look at anymore like i've seen this enough and then i'm like i'm sure somebody out there <laughs> thinks otherwise you haven't seen this this was different like today the one it was the army short you ain't seen that I, yet. No, I saw that. It looks like it's waving. She's done this before. Yeah, but well, not apparently, Jackson <laughs> likes her to do it again. She caught my attention when she did it this time. Like, this was, oh, was different. <laughs> I was just like, I don't even stop to look anymore. <laughs> you know, like, she's, I mean, she can twerk many different ways. She's very talented. She got a boot camp. She got a boot camp. I saw that. I wish I was she there. has a, I think it's a twerk boot camp. Like, it is. Right, but like you need to stop giving away the goods, girl. Because why am I gonna go to your boot camp and watch you do it on Instagram? Now I'm just like, oh, here go Megan Turkin, scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> um, so we'll see what happens here. But you know, again, we could speculate all we want, and bodyguards could leak audio all they want. And at the end of the day, it comes down to it was Tori's gun and it was off safety, and he pulled it out. Yeah why and everything else is just an unfortunate consequence of you acting like an asshole is really what it is yeah. and now you don't want to take responsibility and the way that you're handling this really is just a small um insight into your character as a person mm -hmm. so this, is, this is how you learn how how people really are mm -hmm. I don't know if he's a narcissist because I think that's a really strong word. Like I think Donald Trump is a narcissist. You they know? come in all different sizes and, and shapes. <laughs> but I, I, I do think <laughs> that he might be a, a, a real manipulative person and just uh, the kind of person that never takes responsibility for the things that he does. So well, he took responsibility uh, for quarantine radio. 
<laughs> that's about it so all right moving on um i wanted to talk about young miami really quick um because so how i want to just talk about how amazing nikki is and i know everybody isn't a fan of nikki on this pod nikki minaj yes the only nikki there is <laughs> i was like what she do she had a baby and she's back to rapping what do you mean? Like, she literally just have a baby and she's already rapping again. Anyways, but see, why would you say that? Like, you said she had a baby and she's back to rapping like that's like playing basketball or running a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> she's just not hard. She's too. going back to work. Yes, it is hard. You just had a baby. Where is she going back to work at? At her house or her studio? Don't don't minimize what they do, Dexter. Right. Labor is very intensive. Because I... Die. I talk for a living and I could and I can imagine people be like, oh no, when I have a baby, I'm not talk, I'm not working. I'm taking care of my baby. Right? Well, I, yeah. I mean, now she might have nannies, you might not. And I say that, but I'm just let's put just put that out there too. But to, to your point, I don't minimize what women go through with childbirth. Absolutely not. But I just but she might have nannies. And she might have before. recorded this right before she had the baby or while she was pregnant. <laughs> I like Nicki Minaj, but I just, I mean, all credit ain't due. Uh, we, can't just, <laughs> we can't just give a woman props when she returns to work after having a baby? If she delivered an album and she, like, performed on, like, a stage or something like that, sure. But, like, you just you just did a remix to somebody else's song that you could have done while you were still pregnant. Oh, my God. Okay. She, anyway. Are you sure she didn't do while she was still pregnant? Because I thought she said something about being nine months pregnant. In the song. In the song, I thought. I the way, yeah, but it's in the past tense. Oh, okay, okay. I took it like she recorded it while being I was pregnant. Either way, that's still a lot because I'm not recording nothing. Well, the point is, <laughs> <laughs> y'all haters. <laughs> I'm not. No, no, no. What the hell? No, no. Trying to uplift women going back to work after they have a baby. What well, was that really work? <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe, maybe she did it while she was pregnant. It's still okay. Hard. That was me. Anyways, that was, was hating Shayna. We really did just hate on Nicki Minaj. <laughs> no, I was just—I wasn't hating. I was just stating. But to my to <laughs> Nina's point, I might not be recording that or not. Listen, don't talk to me after six months. Hey, Hello, I'm not doing nothing. But <laughs> I, being I, ready to pop that that bun in the oven. Uh, Hello, and listen. Let me tell you, you might d d diminish Nicki's contribution to the song, but anybody that I've interviewed that has worked with Nicki has told me that she records every verse a thousand times. So that didn't take no a minute, Dex. She wrote that because she writes her stuff. <laughs> she wrote that, recorded it, sent it, rewrote it, re-recorded it, sent it again, rewrote it, dubbed it, sent it again. So this is not a lightweight thing, Dex. The baby's over there like, mom. <laughs> 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 no, she's holding the baby and rapping. Oh, there y'all making it. There she holds the baby. Look, Jana Mina's like, she's holding the baby. She's rapping. She's cooking dinner at the same time. <laughs> she's like, still not her absentee <laughs> she, She's like, all you bitches is my sons. Now I really have one. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping records when I just had a baby because I'm that one. Ah! That was good. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyways, don't y'all minimize Nikki's contributions to music. But she drops this record and she talks about, and this is how I know this is recent, because it's re I think it's in the pandemic that we've seen this resurgence of Birkin bags. Mm -hmm. And everybody wearing a Birkin bag and wanting a Birkin bag and talking about a Birkin bag. They've been around forever. I feel, mm -hmm. like, I feel like they haven't really been that talked about until the pandemic uh, on social media and amongst everybody, right? So in this song, Nikki talks about women rocking used Birkin bags. <laughs> and uh, somebody on social media... Uh, tried to say that she's rapping about Young Miami. <laughs> um, so then Young Miami went off and talked about how she doesn't do anything off consignment. Uh, 
all her Birkin bags are new. Everything she does is new. She's private jets. So she's running through the, her luxuries, right? $70,000 birthday party. Hello. She's running through it on social media off of a fan. <laughs> They <laughs> being messy and trolling and saying Nikki's verses about her. So I started thinking, I don't think it's a bad thing for people to have hand-me-down Birkins. This is not like a hand-me-down Target shirt. This is a hand-me-down $15,000 bag. So I don't see anything wrong with it, but Dex, apparently you do. Just yeah, like... Yeah, I didn't until you started talking about it. Now I do. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those things, like if a car is something, maybe this is because I don't carry purses, but a car is something that like I've had, when I'm done with it, I'll give it over to like my niece or something like that. And she has that and she gets some value out of that. A Birkin bag is like not a necessity. It's not something that's going to get you from point A to point B. It's It's a fashion statement at the most. So to like, so even want something like that. I would understand if you go to like a thrift shop and you grab one from there because you want to get it or whatever. But for people to be like, can I have that? Or I want this or something like that to get like a purse or a material item like that. I don't know. That's kind of, I, I think I understand where my young Miami is coming from. If I'm going to go out there and buy it, I have the money to just go buy it regular. I'm going to do that. I, I think I would be insulted if somebody, if I'm a woman and I have a Birkin bag and someone's like, oh, that's used. That's somebody already had that. Cause it's stupid. Like it's stupid to be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take somebody's used purse when you can just pay and get your own. Like it's not like a it's not a necessity. If it was like a car and it's like that was somebody else's car, it's like, yeah, it was, and I, I needed to get from point A to point B, so I got it. But a purse, I, I don't know. That's but weird. that's because it's not a necessity is why I don't understand why she's looking down on people for doing this. You're talking about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for a bag. That's I a have, down payment, that's a down payment on a house, right? I have one of those too. So why, why would I spend a down payment on a house where I could just get a used one for half the price and only pay five, seven thousand dollars? Like because I can. Like this is the thing. I can do that. I can go and p spend fifteen thousand dollars on this Birkin bag. I can spend this money on these parties, on these houses, so forth and so on. And I did it. If I went out and I spent like fifty thousand dollars on the on the bag and the house and the car and all these things i spent this money i did that you're not going to minimize what i did what i earned and what i paid for on my own by saying that you got it cheap you got it discounted you're not going to do that to me if, if it was a situation where i actually did do it like that or i had to do it like that it is what it is but don't minimize my accomplishments like being able to spend fifteen thousand dollars on a purse is a big deal because everybody can't do that so for her to be able to do something like that and somebody turns around and says like oh you got that like cheaper it's like no 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 not that i need to prove anything but you should know that like this is what i spent on this because i can and i work for it right but dex i think what mina's saying is but if there's somebody that can't do that and they went and bought a broken bag from a consignment shop like why should that be looked down upon like if they didn't spend the fifteen thousand dollars because they only got two thousand and they walk into a vintage shop and there's a broken bag for two thousand like why you know again young Miami you know that's not what she did but it should that not be okay for the next woman or person well then that goes back to the same thing that Mina said before so the the Birkin bag is fifteen thousand dollars young Miami paid fifteen thousand dollars for it but then at the same time people are like well that's what you could have paid on the house or so forth and so on you can't afford to pay fifteen thousand dollars for it but yet you're going to take that two thousand you have and you're going to spend it on a purse why didn't you put that towards your down payment to your house or your LLC or whatever? So I, I'm. <laughs> okay. First, first of all, you, you needed to be in our conversation last week with Jamisa because Jamisa thinks about everything in terms of money. Right. So Jamisa bought a Tesla cash. Mm -hmm. Right. So she talked about how she owns 27 houses. She's 23. No, she's 27 years old. She owns 23 houses. Right. So she thinks about, and she makes a million dollars, right? She was talking about money and how she could buy some of these things, right? But she doesn't because she feels like it's a waste of money, right? So it's not that she doesn't have the 15000 is that it's a waste of money to spend that much money on a bag, right? When you can spend it on something else. So that's why I don't understand this whole thing where we're seeing now people looking down 
on other people who are just a little bit more money conscious, whether they can afford it or not. It can be two things. It could be, you can't afford it. And that's why you get the cheaper one, or you want to be more money conscious. I'll give you an example. There was a Gucci belt, right? And, um, the, I think the Gucci belt that I wanted was like $600, right? Mm -hmm. So I had found it on a website, like on, on a bless Ooh, you, on a resale, on a resale website, but it was new, right? So it had tags and you know everything, right? And I think it was like, it was like four fifty on the resale website, so it's one hundred and fifty dollars less. So I'm talking to my girlfriend, saying like, "Girl, I got this Gucci belt new, but instead of paying the six hundred dollars at the store, I got it for four fifty. So you know me, I I like. I like bargains, right? I like, I like shopping for a bargain. That's not how I am. I could pay for it, but I'd rather get it on sale. It makes me good to get it on. It, it makes me feel good. I got it on sale. Okay. So my friend was like, why don't you just buy the $600 one? <laughs> and I was like, cause I can get it for 450. <laughs> and she was like, but you can get it in like the Gucci wrapping and the box and you know, it, these things come very well presented. And I said, and put the box in the wrapping where? <laughs> in, in the, like what? I, I don't, so it literally comes down to how you value money or, or, and not that my friend doesn't value money, but for her, it's important to spend the $600 to get it straight from the Gucci store to get the wrapping and the box and the bag that the little thing comes from. For me, it's like, oh, I'm getting it with tags. Do, do I care that it comes in a box? No. <laughs> do I care that it comes with a bag? It did come with the bag, but I'm getting it for four fifty. Well, I was going to say something. Yeah, and I was going to say this is not a not on Young Miami because to Jackson's point, if you can do it and that's what you want to do, it's fine. But it's also like an old money, new money thing because you see people with old money and they don't spend money on things like that. I'm not saying they don't always, but they might buy one Birkin bag in a lifetime. You know, they might buy one one of these things. It, it does just come down to your point, what you said, what you value. Right. Because some of them might value more investments and stocks and houses or whatever it may be over bags and things that some people would consider more showy. It just really depends. I mean, and again, I've worked in industries, I've worked with millionaires that to the almost to the extreme where one literally, literally had holes in his shoes. That's the extreme of, of not where you feel like you don't want to spend your money. Right. But again, I just think it, it's just different for everybody, you know, and, and I do think if you can do it and you can afford to, and even if you don't have your priorities straight, I mean, it ain't my life. So that's what you want to do, you know? So it, it, it's just, it's really, really up to each person, but I don't think you knock somebody for to your point, getting the bargain or the discount, whether it's a little, you know, a step down or a hand me down. I understand she was just more. I think like people are saying like, oh, she's disrespecting people, but I think she was just upset and was just trying to say like, that's not me. Like I don't do that. Like I, I, I don't buy. You know, da 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 da. It wasn't meant to be a knock on anybody. She was just kind of stating like, it's not my situation. Well, I think the bigger thing is why are you reacting to some troll on Twitter? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Who assumes it's about Say, you. saying you your bag mean? is fake? Listen, and look, I was trying to come at a lot of girls, a lot yes. of girls, and and yeah. you could have been one, but I'm sure it was definitely not just about you. But but the and then the thing is, so that's a. But b, I would understand saying responding, be like, no, you know, my bags are all brand new. But it's the way that she responded. She was like, never ever, what the f do I look like? If it ain't new, I don't want it. And that's down to my cars. I have a G-Wagon, a Bentley, every Chanel bag. Don't play with me. I buy, buy cars for my sisters and brothers. I have a big, uh, big, my brother's big house. What the F I look like buying off of somebody else? Exactly. That's why I laugh at the every Chanel bag. I'm like, so you mean to tell me you have every single one? That's, that's oh, what but it, it's just, <laughs> it, it kind of irked me a little yeah. bit. Because I'm like, yeah. bitch, you're talking about a bag and a fucking car. Talk to me about stocks and bonds and a house. Right. Bitch, say I bought three houses. I bought my sister, my mother, and my brother a house. Ain't cash, no mortgage. That's the talk. Well, it made me question. <laughs> That's like, the this talk. Is why I use one? Because why are you so angry? To your point, like, <laughs> what nerve did that hit that you really had to go in like that on somebody you don't even know? Right. <laughs> and speculating something. 
did she really have money like that at 26? Well, I was and, confused about that too. Wait, but so here's another thing. Her boyfriend uh, it, does stuff as well. He's a producer and stuff. So I think he, he she said that, you know, I think she said something oh, like- Oh yeah, she said like, he, my baby he dad bought, got me on jets. And right, this, 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 right. So she said, um, right. She said that her baby dad got, got her on jets. And then she said that, uh, taking me shopping, spending whatever, it's not a limit, right? So you're getting new things fresh out the box with the wrapping paper and the tags <laughs> on somebody else's dime. Well, th- I think some, well, that, that, and that was my next point about this is, girl, you bragging real big about having bags and a lot of people talking about your wrapping ain't all the way there. So... <laughs> So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be so braggadocious when you literally, your career, you've been here for two, three years. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that she's investing her money properly. And I'm hoping that she's not spending her money and her boyfriend's money on these material things. And I'm hoping that she stops looking down on other women who are more money conscious than she is. Cause not everybody has a rich boyfriend to take them on private jets. Some women are actually working for the bags that they're paying for themselves. What's what's worse though? (laughs) Getting a bag from, you know, like a discount, like a used one on a discount or or bragging about getting brand new bags that you're not paying for. Like that's almost insulting to me actually. Right. Well, I don't, we don't know what the difference is, you know, because it was a barrage of tweets and she, (laughs) right. She went on a, I'm rich bitch rant. You know, and the rant was my boyfriend got me on private jets and there's no limit to the spending, right? But then she transitioned to, I got every Chanel, all my bags are new, I don't do nothing, no hand-me-down, my sister got a car, my brother got a car, and I got, I, and a big house. That's, that was the rant. Yeah, but that, that's like those, that's like when we were in college and like it would be on a weekend and it's like, oh, let's buy liquor. And I remember me saying like, <laughs> oh, I don't do bottom shelf liquor like the rest of y'all. And my one friend was like, yeah, because your parents are giving you money and stuff like that. Like, you just, you can't brag. Like, you're not doing this on your own. Like, someone's assisting you. Oh, so like, now, now you're flipping. <laughs> yeah, because, because that I don't like. Like, I'm okay with her saying, like, I get all my stuff brand new out the box. Well, I'm cool with that. But don't say that if someone else is helping you do that. Like, it's like me with the liquor. Yes, you can buy the Grey Goose in college because it's not your money that you're spending. You can never brag to somebody if you if you depend on somebody. Else. That's the, I don't I don't. I don't like I, well, I guess to me this point we don't know whether we she, don't know she buys all her Birkin bags or he helps he buys. It doesn't, some buy if he, it doesn't matter if he's assisting you in your life. You can't you can't do that. Like you can't brag about like like you can't brag yes. about something. As Let, like, hold on, hold on. If I meet a millionaire, a multi millionaire, <laughs> yeah. and he is assisting me, I'm not you say thank you to him. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I would not do that. But if I want to talk about our our lifestyle, I'm okay with talking about our lifestyle. The bag's lifestyle. not his. He's not carrying the bag. It's just <laughs> you. <laughs> but what's wrong with saying, okay, my man got me all these bags. Yeah. Like, I can't there's, afford it. <laughs> there's nothing wrong. Well, that. There's nothing wrong <laughs> with, like... There's nothing wrong with appreciating someone for doing something for you. But if you're appreciating, if your appreciation of another person because of something that they've done for you makes other people feel any kind of way, or you look down at other people because of something that somebody else is doing for you, like yeah. that's pathetic. Like you pretty much are in the same boat or could be in the same boat as these other women. Like if you didn't have this guy bankrolling your lifestyle, would you be able to do that? That's what Nicki Minaj needs to put in her rap. <laughs> you're like dm to nikki next time add this one <laughs> well look in general you know i just think that as a culture we meet, need to be more mindful about where we put our money and you know we all like nice things but i don't think it's cool to look down on other people who are a little bit more budget friendly than you might be and nikki is the queen and I, I, I was, I found it very entertaining with when she was taking shots at other people. To be honest, me personally, if I can't afford a fifteen hundred dollar bag, a fifteen thousand dollar bag, fifteen thousand dollar bag, I'm not even gonna try to buy one for seven thousand. I can't afford that shit. Right, <laughs> it's out my, it's out my budget. Bro, <laughs> I'm not, money. I'm not there. Like I'm to be straight up. I'm not. I'm not going to the Birkin I'm store. Not, nah. <laughs> like, listen. 
I'll go to Hermes and get the little wallet. <laughs> Why you say it like that? Or, I mean, wallet. Maybe, maybe they'll start riding and looting again. You can get your couple bags. And then... <laughs> Listen, I got two mortgages. If I run into any money, all right, I got to do all the, I got to redo my finished basement that I tore up to put a something pump in. I got real life issues, you know? You know, they be having it easy. They got a little change so they could buy a nice house. When you a struggling working woman, you got to buy an okay house and then <laughs> kind of work on it. So that's mm -hmm. me. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, if I get a little change, fifty if I get fifteen thousand dollars, I'm not buying a Birkin. Yeah, I'm, I'm redoing my basement. <laughs> what? I'll let a man buy me a Birkin. You can buy me a Birkin all day and I will brag my man got me this shit, okay? <laughs> and I'll wait. And when you first said it, I do think it's funny, like the re, and again, it's not a knock on Birkin because they're a legendary bag. That's obviously a very high and exclusive bag. But I do feel like this resurgent, like Queen um, um, Naja had a party and it was the Birkin bag presentation. And I'm like, when did we get back here? Like, I'm so confused. When That's what I'm saying. It happened in the, the Birkin bag. it happened in the pandemic. And I, I just, I just, I don't know if it's, hey, we're struggling and this is how we're showing that we're not. I don't know if it's a reverse, like, I just don't understand. They were stealing me. I'm telling you, they were stealing them bags. <laughs> and it was a bunch of Birkin bags in the street. So now everybody, everybody got one. So they're like, look, I got one too. They flexing now. That's Where was I? I? It's at home. This when they was, they was when they was riding and looting. They were, they were at the Birkin store. You thought they was just at Gucci. They were at the Birkin <laughs> store. I'm telling you. First of all, they don't even keep the bags in the store. You gotta order yeah. them. Right. <laughs> Remember Birkin the sex was the up, knocking them off the back of the truck. Something they were stealing <laughs> yeah. those bags. That's what happened. Oh, oh okay. gosh. Well, to each his own. <laughs> Whatever. But you really have to order those bags. Yeah. You never seen this. Uh, you gotta watch. I'm gonna personally send you the Sex in the City. Yep. Lucy Lou episode. Uh, I don't even want to give it away for all the viewers, but you gotta watch it. And that goes through the Birkin bag, the 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 ordeal to get one. It's not yeah. an easy thing. And you know what's like 1998. Yeah, they've been they, around they, for a yeah. long time. Let me tell you, I learned about everything luxury from Sex in the City. Yeah. Shout out to Sarah Jessica Parker because I was a broke bitch watching Sex in the City and I knew all about everything. I knew about the Malona Blondes because of Sex in the yeah. City. Yeah. I found about the Birkin bags because of Sex in the City. Yeah. I was a broke bitch. I ain't know nothing about no fucking red bottoms until I was watching Sex in the City. So yeah. red bottoms have been out before Sex, like for a while. Yeah. yeah. Not you, not all the stuff that you learned from Sex in the City, I learned from Jennifer Lopez. Everything you just mentioned i've seen it all that's how i know what it is that's hilarious sex in the city i mean they, they they're literally playing old school manhattan money upper east side you know that money mm -hmm. so it's like and and i i i love i mean that's why i love hocus pocus because <laughs> i love Sarah <laughs> jessica Parker. <laughs> Because I was watching Sex in the City. All right, we're talking a lot. Uh, let's move. So I wa I kind of want to talk about the cougar. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> leave the cougar be. We running out of time. <laughs> Real quickly, what do you do when a cougar is chasing you? Like, there were serious debates online about the cougar video of the guy running in the mountains and a cougar starts following him. Like, and then people were debating, like, he was looking at the cougar the whole time and talking to it and filming it as he was backing up for, like, five minutes. And then all of a sudden, the cougar ran away. Like, how are you supposed to deal with a cougar? I'd have been eight. So, like, I just like know. what he did. If, I, if it's about to happen to me, I'm going live. Because if I die, <laughs> that's it. I'm, you need to know what, what, what went down. So I'm going to be live. I am going live. I'm trying to back away. <laughs> I'm, I know I peed on myself already, probably something else too. Like that's happened already. But at the same time, they're like, I'm recording this. So you guys know exactly what happened when it's over. I can go viral and maybe I can recoup some of my self-esteem for using the bathroom with myself. And like, you know, like that's it. Like that's how you handle it. Yo, but I've never seen a cougar attack. It like goes like this and drags the back of its feet. I was so amazed. I was confused. I was definitely confused. Like, wow, this is how I like, you know, because we see videos of like lions and cheetahs right. and the way they can kind of pounce and attack. And I was like, wait, what? Is, I was like, is something wrong with his legs? Like, 
what is going on? I said I would have probably tried to climb a tree and realize that certain cats can climb trees. Yeah, so again, climb. I just would have yeah. been, I would have been done. I'd have been done. Yeah, but I saw people say like, why didn't you throw a rock? Oh, and no. it, and initially I thought the same thing, but then I'm like, then you would piss it off. Yeah. And you have to pick the rock up. So that like, you have to lean down and pick. When you lean down, that thing is going to flap his arms over there and kill you. Flap his arms. I'm good. <laughs> But how about the guy was like, girl, girl go, go, go find your baby. I feel like the cougar was like more, and to your point, I think if you would have went to get the rock, it would have felt threatened where it seemed like it just literally didn't want to be bothered. Like it was almost talking to him like, go, go. I don't feel like messing with you. Like, go, you in my space. Where you would have got that rock, ooh, that would have been a whole nother story. Right. I mean, no rock and try to throw it at me. You in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. So okay. So there's you don't run. You, and so somebody was saying there's specific rules when you're dealing with a big cat, right? So you have to look at it in the eyes. Oh no, I'm eating. <laughs> right. Then they were saying you have to sl move slowly and not run, and like don't turn your back to it. Don't bend down because it'll use that as an opportunity to attack you, and. I was just very amazed because I, I would have probably tried to throw a rock at it <laughs> and it would have been... <laughs> just because you throw that rock and then you know, like, it, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I, it, it's like just looking at it, it's like, well, he should have did this. He should have did that. I think in that moment, the only thing you really do is stand there and use the bathroom on yourself. Like, that's it. Like, what, like, what else are you supposed to do? Yeah. yeah, I was just impressed that he filmed it for like almost five mm -hmm. minutes. I would have been more worried about my life. You know how people are though. Like that's how people it. are. Like people care more about the social media aspect of it than anything else. We all watched all five minutes of it too. Like all of us were like, "Wait, what's about to happen? What's about to happen? Oh my god, what's about to happen?" I thought that was his last five minutes. Right. <laughs> I really thought the cougar was gonna eat him, and then yeah. it just—I was confused as to why it just ran away out of nowhere. And I, and I almost felt like it was staged. Like, how does the cougar just run away like that all of a sudden out of nowhere? You now you sound like me. You sound like me thinking everything was staged. <laughs> yeah, like, how was it scared after it was, it was like, it was literally salvating for him. It was like. <laughs> I, I think it's what Shayna said. Like, I, I really do think it was kind of like one of those, like, get back, like, move away from me. Like, I don't need you to be here. I think it was one of those situations. Yeah, like, we invade in all these animal spaces, like, and it definitely taught me, I'm not going on no hikes, no trails in Colorado. This is not happening. Right. Well, you listen, I didn't need a video to make me not go on no damn hike. You tell me you want to go where to the bias? The fuck do I look like Yogi Bear? I'm not going to fucking bow in to hike. Yo, that is the whitest shit ever. I never heard no hike until I went met some white people. Yo, let's go on a hike. What the fuck? Is I, that? I just went hiking a couple weeks ago and it's it was amazing. I loved it. I want to go back. Oh my god, did you see a cougar? <laughs> No, there was no animals. No, he saw a real life woman cougar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just wanted to have a brief conversation about the cougar because I literally <laughs> I was so amazed at how it attacked him like this and dra it like flew, dragged. I don't, that was amazing. All right. So, our topic for this week is about the pandemic and the holiday. We literally just talked about, you know, um, more cases coming up. They're saying the second surge is coming. Um, I keep seeing Dr. Fauci talking about, <laughs> shout out to my boy, Dr. Fauci. Hello, when you Google and you hit doctor, he the first one to come up. Hello, you're Googleable. So Dr. Fauci said that he wants us to chill and kind of limit the, the, the family interaction. So at first, when Corona first broke out, it was like you would get it from strangers or whatever. Now they're they're calling them super spreader events where it's literally family members and people that know each other getting together and they think it's safe because everybody knows each other right so we're not even getting it from strangers mostly anymore um and you're literally getting it from someone that you know because you're going to an event so they're worried about that is the pandemic going to change your holiday this year like how are you guys feeling about that um, I'll start. Yeah, it will. It's going to change my holiday this year because, and it's okay too. My parents, the last time the coronavirus hit, my parents were like, don't come near me. Don't come to my house. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. Text me, call me. That's it. And that's what I had to do for a couple months. Well, damn. 
No. <laughs> my parents don't. Your parents don't love you, Dexter. <laughs> they do not play with this coronavirus. So they're very serious about it. You can't so call just, them. <laughs> yeah, no, Dexter, that was a reason for them not to have to deal with your ass. I don't blame them. But, <laughs> but, but in, for my defense now, their pool is closed now because it's like the winter or the fall winter. So I don't want to go over there anyway. So we good to go. I'll eat my chicken and my turkey at my house and, and watch TV. Win-win. With your fiance? Yeah, win-win. So what about her family? Don't call us, don't text us, don't come over. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not doing no family at all? Probably not. It depends on how my mom acts. Like if I she if she's like how she was before, then no. Cause she I don't understand how you go to St. Lucia and you take your mask off around strangers, but you're not willing to go be well, with your family. About, it's less about me and what I'm willing to do. It's more so like my parents. Like they're, they don't want anybody to come over. Like they're very like strict and serious about it. Even the mailman, they were like, email us stuff like they <laughs> my parents are people who like they physically like to get their mail like their bills like send us send us the bills in the mail when the pandemic hit they were like email us everything <laughs> <laughs> they were like we're gonna pay for this for sure <laughs> how about halloween oh i don't do that anyway i'm black <laughs> first of all what is that with i have a lot of friends who are like i don't celebrate white people holidays I'm like, is Halloween a white people holiday? I thought it was just a scary it's people not from the dead. Day. What? It's in a lot of black churches back in the day. It was definitely like not like looked upon like to be able to celebrate that holiday because it looked it was like it's the day of the day. dead. But yeah, it looked upon like it's demonic and it's this. So a lot of like churches would do stuff. So not all black people, but a lot of old school, you know, black churches were against. The holiday but i don't really do i mean i do like i'll do fun stuff with you or whatever but i don't really do halloween we don't really have kids that come around on halloween as is so that one is like a nothing for me i actually i have a girlfriend whose birthday is next week and she always has like something around halloween obviously the pandemic has changed things um i do think that she's looking to have like a dinner or something that's like distant but like it's not technically like a Halloween party, but she has had dress up Halloween parties. But I was gonna say for me, I know for Thanksgiving, my brother-in-law, he's Jamaican, his whole family's either from Jamaica or New York, and they were planning uh, a big kind of meetup in Philly because it was like a midway point for a lot of people um, to celebrate Thanksgiving, and now that's not gonna happen. But I will say like, my mom was a little worried. Like my mom called me and she probably still, he, he'll know it now. But she was like, oh, I ain't going to be going. <laughs> they coming from all the hot spots. I am not going to be going. She's so as soon as it got canceled, she called me like, girl, it's canceled. We ain't even got to worry about it. I was like, this is the only one worried. Listen. And, go ahead. No, but like, and like I said, Christmas, we are looking to go to San Antonio. But we just got to play it by ear and see what happens. It's not going to be a big thing. Again, I think even when we get down there, we were looking at Airbnbs. So we could just kind of stay together and not really you know, go out and be doing anything. And we're literally going in like Christmas Eve and we're coming back like the day or something after. Like, it's not like a long time just to kind of be with family. But I do understand why Dr. Fauci is expressing it because we do know when this virus first started and it first hit, a lot of those super spreader events that they talked about happened at like, like I remember the case with the one family. Y'all remember that, that it was like, 10 of them got it and like six or eight of them died. died. So I think like that, like they're looking at it like that. Like if all these people, you know, again, yes, Dex might go to St. Lucia. We might meet up for dinner, but if everyone kind of in America is meeting up and having these large celebrations, the chances of, yes, you spreading it throughout your family is very high. Yep. I'm not seeing nobody. I'm not buying y'all no gifts for Christmas. I, I'm excited. Girl, I already got your Christmas gifts. <laughs> Girl, you better mail it. <laughs> I do have your mailing address. <laughs> I'm not seeing nobody. Like, I listen, it I, I have an excuse not to buy these people. My mother is one of eight. Yeah. <laughs> one of eight. Whoa. Right. Nah, we not seeing each other. It's the pandemic. I'm not even going outside. I might give you corona through the bag. Nope. You're right. Nope. So are you gonna do Thanksgiving with your mom? I I'm just gonna hang out with my mom, literally. That's it. Just my mom. Uh, you know, I, you know, Halloween and Christmas are my two favorite holidays and it's sad. Um, but I think I'm still going to decorate 
and I'm still going to be in the spirit. Like same thing for Halloween. You know, I decorate every year for Halloween. I decorate it and I'm still in the spirit. I'm watching movies. Shayna and I are going to go to a haunted house. Um, no, the Bates Motel uh, that she dissed me on two years ago. Okay, but it was a mistake. Dax, do you know I got us free tickets to go to the base motel like two years ago and I waited for Shayna an hour outside and it, I drove there an hour, waited for Shayna an hour, and then we missed it. First of all, I was I was caught up in an interview with an artist I managed and then I got lost because she told me it was somewhere and I think it was my fault because I didn't put it in GPS. I assumed it was another part of like the outside Philly area than where I actually was at. So where I actually was at at the starting point where I was at was like maybe 20 minutes. And I drove like 45 minutes away from where I, the where I starting point was at. The point was we missed it. So but now, so now we, we had got other fun Halloween experiences though. But now we got to pay to go. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna do that but yeah i'm not doing any parties i'm not even really dressing up i haven't bought a costume i, I might just don't i, I might just, set a costume i just don't i probably just to do it for like pictures or whatever because i like to do that but i won't go anywhere with it i bought a purple wig that's what it with a purple wig just wear what's it your, what's your costume what's the rest of it i don't understand bitch i'm gonna put pasties on my nipples and i'm gonna be Lil kim <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious okay that's funny i love it i don't i'm not spending money on a costume where i'm not even going out like i'm not hosting no parties there aren't any parties and i'm not doing anything you know i well, wear honestly, a costume. i just want to say when you say the effect on the holidays and i am a person i'm a person that finishes like my Christmas shopping and everything like really in this month and I am almost done. But to your point, I that it has affected like the things that I buy. Like normally like my niece and my guy kids, I buy them these cute outfits and like I was returning something at the mall today. And I'm like, I'm not buying this. Like they're not going anywhere. Like right. so it's really kind of affected like what I look at like to even gift people. Like I'm like, this is super cute, but I'm gonna buy this so they can get wear this dress in the house. Like where are they going? Like they're not going anywhere. Yeah. So it, it's affected the way that I look at like what is even a gift that makes sense to buy people because I don't want to waste my money and you know things of that nature. Yeah, we could do like an Elfster thing, and that's remote. Like you ever you ever been on Elfster? Mm-mm. You put people's names in there, and uh, the computer automatically pairs you with someone, and then you could send your gift to the person, and then I guess you just do a Zoom. And you I'm gonna send my gift to you because it's personal for you. <laughs> no, oh, okay. I'm just saying it's a good. <laughs> there are ways to still kind of keep that same spirit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you send gifts to each other, then open it. You know, to get it, this is just for Christmas. I know what you're saying. Open I know what you're it saying. together for Zoom, but I'm not gonna be seeing anybody. Like every year, we have a holiday party at my mom's house. I don't think we're even gonna do it. Yeah. You know, so that's. Food I'm not spending money on, gifts I'm not buying on my cousins. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, I'm yeah. just not doing it. Thanksgiving is just gonna be me and my mom. I don't got. We don't got to get a super huge turkey and all the sides, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, it's definitely gonna be scaled down, and I'm not spending the money I was spending before. Yeah, Dexter, you disappeared. Where'd you go? I think something happened on his computer. Get it together. You come back from St. Lucia. <laughs> That's why he thought he was gone for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he did come back. Like, I haven't seen you. I'm like, bro. <laughs> like, wait a minute. No. I saw you. <laughs> right. I saw you when you were trying to figure out your test results. So. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's wrap things up. Uh, too bad we lost Dexter, but thank you. It's the 150th episode of the Mina's House podcast. Please find us on YouTube. I mean to say what? I'm Shayna B. Sherlock Homeboy, Dex the One. We are all usually here. Thank you for watching. Peace. And listening. Peace.